welcome back my cool cats and kittens and you are here on Jalen Denise channel and if you have not done so yet go ahead and hit the subscribe button like and comment <laughs> if you don't know where that's from yeah you lame I'm sorry but anyways welcome back to my channel blah, 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 blah. if you have not done so yet subscribe comment like and let's jump on into it you can probably tell by the title of this video what it is all about and we're just gonna jump right into it so they're probably like, what are you doing with the Sharpie? I saw a technique where they use a Sharpie to act as a cuticle line. And that's probably another reason why you're having lifting. So if you don't get rid of the cuticle, which is a, a colorless dead skin that adhere to the nail plate, if you do not get rid of it, you will have lifting. If you don't get rid of oils on the natural nail, it will get, you will have lifting. So... I use an e-file. It's not recommended. Some people do great with a regular hand file and have no lifting. You just it's all about prepping. So I use a hand an e-file and I use a fine sanding band. And then this is a medium sanding band. I would prefer a fine sanding band because all you're doing is getting rid of the cuticle and the shine. I feel like the medium is a little bit more coarse. As you can see on the left side, it's medium and right side is fine. Don't worry about what's on there on my sanding band because I was doing another video until I scrapped it so yeah um I will go in with that with a sanding band and if you do not know you do not use the same sanding band every single client that's why I feel like nail people don't realize how expensive nails get you literally have to buy stuff over and over again because you cannot use the same sanding band you can't use the same file you can't say use the same buffer you can't use the same brush you can't use anything that's disposable or anything or you can't use anything but okay we, we'll get back into that but anyways i'm showing you the speeds uh when you're prepping the natural nail you want to put it at the lowest setting and i'm using the melody Susie scarlet drill so i think when I looked at it, it was probably around 2,000, 3,000 RPMs, which is very, very slow. I put it against my finger and it will not cut me. It literally doesn't do that. So always remember to hold the finger from sidewall to sidewall. Uh, since I lost my fingers to my little practice hand, yeah. But when you're doing anything with somebody nail, hold the fingers from sidewall to sidewall. It just gives you a sturdier base to work with. Now, when you're going in with your e-file or your file, you want to do a glide and lift, glide and lift to get rid of the cuticle. As you can see, if you leave it on there too long, you will cause friction, which will cause your client to burn or you will put rings of fire on somebody's nails, which is an indentation in the nail. And I'm pretty sure everybody has had ring of fire at some point in a life going to chop shops and stuff or just going to a regular nail tech that just is so heavy-handed on the e-file i literally personally was so terrified to do that so i i think it's best to also practice on yourself so you can feel what it feels like i'm sorry i feel like to me it was better if i mess up my own nails than messing up somebody else of course you don't want to mess up your nails on purpose but yeah but this is what I'm talking about. Like this brush specifically, I use for my desk to brush dust off. I do not use this on clients because you can spread any, you don't know if somebody was bleeding, spreading all that. Like use different brushes per client. But for my practice hand, I just use it. It's not a real hand. But as you can see, I got the cuticle off, air parentheses, uh, I, or air quotes. I got the cuticle off and I took the shine away without any indentations of course you probably still sub black because i wouldn't use black if you're going to do this method now going in with nail tips use mock 5 glue i feel like this is best for the practice hand because people always have problems saying that their nail tips don't stick and mock 5 literally sticks to anything <laughs> like you get your finger stuck your finger's gonna be stuck so make sure you measure your nail tips from sidewall to sidewall it should not be bigger and it should not be smaller or you will have cracking or lifting so it should fit from sidewall to sidewall you can also file it to make sure it fits that client's fingers specifically so that's totally up to you so as you can see 
there's my nail tip and I will also leave everything I use down below so you can go ahead and click it if you would like to purchase anything of course I have no affiliation links so your girl ain't getting paid so but yeah if you need anything everything would be down in the description box below but yeah I got these nail tips from Amazon and I got this nail tip cutter from Sally's but you can also get from Amazon different colors blah 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 so I'm gonna cut it short like I said I'm only showing you the short way so the first thing is to file whatever shape so we're just gonna keep it square so when you're filing keep it on the sides don't bend the the file inward don't leave it out where you want your file oh, i'm just showing you the sidewall thing but you want the file to be at a 90 degree angle it's kind of hard for you to tell because i'm trying to look but my camera's literally right above my practice hand but you want the file to be 90 degree angle from the nail that's how you're going to get that straight line and you want to do at least four files on each side because since i'm only doing square it's no point of going hard at all so it's like one two three four and then move to the next side because if you file too much on one side and not the other then that's when your nails will start to look lopsided but keep your file at a 90 degree angle that's how you get them straight lines and you good now i feel like now my sides are good now i'm going at the top now some people were like okay at my angle it looks crooked now yes i have that problem as well but it, it you basically just got to pay attention and hold your file at a good angle basically it's hard sometimes like you still want to hold it at a 90 degree angle like from the nail to the file it should make a 90 degree angle that's what i mean by that and the best way to make sure that it is straight across or whatever if you like one of the people that it has to be perfect flip your client's hand where the back hand is facing you and the nails are facing you and file uh that way so you can get a uh, straight like like this basically it should be facing you and then that's how you can file it better if you feel like it so i already did that off camera because there's no point of watching me do all that anyways so yeah i feel like i'm talking this whole video but whatever anyways um now we're gonna blend the nail tip you can also take your file or your e-file i used to do the file but e-file is a lot faster but when you do this part you do not touch the nail plate you're just touching the nail tip do not touch the nail plate do not file the nail plate do not do any of that you literally are only touching the nail tip just to blend it into the nail plate you do not go hard you don't do any of that so when I'm going in with my E5, you're just umping, upping the RPMs. So I was at 5,000 RPMs. So when I started with 3,000, I'm at five to 6,000 now just to blend it. And I'm doing that glide and lift to not cause friction. And all you're doing is just wanting it to blend as best as you can to the nail plate. Like, it don't have to be perfect. Only if you're doing, like, a clear nail. You want it to be pretty close to the nail plate so you don't see the line for the nail plate. And then I just go ahead and uh, file the rest of the nail. And sometimes I take my e-file to clean up any imperfections where I file. You do not have to do this. It's not recommended. If you don't feel comfortable, do not do it. Uh... I don't know why I did it because I felt like I messed it up because it's like if y'all could see my setup of my camera it is so hard for me to look at what I'm doing so <clears throat> yeah that's all I'm doing at this point yeah so yeah okay Jasmine <laughs> Now you go ahead and brush the excess uh, dust off. So when you go in with your, this is optional. You don't have to do this, but I feel like this just works for me to make sure I get all the oils off. This is a dehydrator um, from OPI. You can use any dehydrator because all it does is just gets all the oils off. That's it. And you only need to put that on a nail plate. It does not go on the nail tip. You do not have to do that. It's not necessary. And then you go in with your choice of primer. I use Young Nails Protein Bond. I like it. I feel like 
I have no problems with it. Not really. Of course, if you have lifting, that's because your prepping is not good. <laughs> that's literally what it resorts to. So I go ahead, make sure you get it all over the nail plate, and I go a little bit over the nail tip where the nail tip and the nail plate meet. That's how far I do it. I don't go all the way on the nail plate, on the nail tip. I don't do all that. But just make sure you get the primer all over the nail plate. And you do not have to do this part, but I do it. I put it a little bit where the nail tip and the nail plate meet. Okay, now I'm going in with my size 12 brush I got from Amazon. I will leave the link down below if you would like to purchase this. I like it. I don't get any clumping in my bristles. But it's also because if you get clumping, it's because you're not cleaning your brush enough in between each bead. But I'm going with my Valentino Shade and Kind Candy. I love Valentino. It is very, very easy to work with. Of course, it's a little expensive, but it's worth it. So if you don't want to spend that much money on acrylic right now, if you're like a beginner, then don't buy this <laughs> yet. But I use Valentino. I use Valentino, Young Nails, Glam and Gliss, blah, blah, blah. But anyways, um, I also use Young Nails Monomer. I prefer their Monomer because I just like it. I don't know. I don't know. I like it a lot. It's I tried Mia Secret, was and then when I met Young Nails, I broke up with Mia Secret, Mia Secret, and me and Young Nails got married. So yeah, that's what ended up happening. So what all I'm doing is I'm just putting my brush at the bottom to get any bubbles, you know, get all that out. Cause you know how people be saying I get bubbles in my acrylic, and somebody I saw on Instagram say, do this before you do it, and it works for her. But yeah. And I worked, tried it, and here we are. So I just showed you a bead that since you're doing a short nail, you do not need very huge beads, only if you're doing a one bead method. So in this video, I'm kind of showing you a two bead method. But sometimes everybody, your application is not going to always be perfect, only if you just like really, really good at this, which is a lot of nail techs are really, really good at this. So they don't need all that extra help. They don't need extra beads. But I'm just showing you the size B that I will start off with with doing this nail. So when you're picking up a B, you want to drag your bead on the side to get any excess liquid off, but not too much because you still want it a little damp or a little wet. And then I'm going to place it a little bit where I guess area two of the nail is, basically past the, the nail tip onto the nail plate. And then I'm going to sl like slowly work with it. Not too slow because you don't want it to dry. And you want to be gentle. You don't want to pat it too hard that the acrylics start getting too flat. You take too much off because I'm not removing any of the acrylic. As you see, I'm trying to work with it. And I'm taking the belly of my brush to push it in, flatten it and then create the shape and as you see you can see the nail coming along i feel like i don't i feel like that's the best way i can explain it so i feel like i'm gonna i'm gonna make another video also like doing a longer nail how i do it like i don't speak for no other nail tech everybody has their own technique the only thing basically you just got to find your own technique that works for you but this is my technique and i will show it to you guys so yeah and then of course you have like excess acrylic you take it off from under when you do short nails they do not need to be thick or they will look like chiclets and that was my problem when i was doing short nails in the beginning they look like chiclets they were so ugly so now i'm gonna go with my second bead which is a tad bit smaller than the bead that i used the first time and when you do the cuticle area you put it a tad bit above the cuticle area and you take your brush to push it down do not put it directly on the cuticle area that's how you cause flooding and when you do the cuticle area like you saw me put my brush down to get more liquid off that's all you got to do to make the bead a little bit more dry to avoid flooding the cuticle that's it that's all because when I learned that man it was a different ball game baby but that's it and you just go ahead take your brush clean up the cuticle take your belly of your brush to move it down uh, the rest of it and as you can see there's an apex the apex don't have to be dramatic it's some nails that they love dramatic 
apex is it is not necessary and then i'm taking a little bit because i saw a little spot that i feel like it needed a little bit more filling but so i guess two and one third of a bead not a two bead method two and one third bead method <laughs> but yeah Now I'm going in with my e file using a very very fine uh, drill bit. The teeth are not big at all. I literally put this at the very low setting, but in this case, because I don't have a buffer, but I put it at the very very low setting and go around the cuticle area. Now when you do this part, you're not touching the nail plate at all. The entire bit is only touching the nail, the acrylic. I do not put it against the nail at all to guide me, no. And then I use the bit to buff the rest of the nail because since I'm out of buffers, and this bit actually works as a buff, so a buffer. So I'm going ahead and doing that real quick. But yeah, when you do this part, you are not touching your client's nail plate. I wish I had a better angle so you can actually see what I'm talking about, but look at what the nail looks like at the cuticle area it looks like 10 times better and now once you're finished with all that this is what it will look like now you have a nail that is ready for cleanse so all you gotta do is wash your hands top coat or whatever you got to do but i'll just show you the thickness of the nail the smooth so it's ready to go it's finished you ain't gotta do nothing else to it um yeah so this is how I do it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you like it, please subscribe, like, and comment. And see you in the next video, guys. Thanks. Bye.